Welcome to this quick tutorial on bearing wall removal strategies and really how we communicate our temporary shoring plans when we are proposing removing bearing walls. This video does not explain how we determine whether a wall is bearing or not, merely starts with understanding which walls are bearing and just communicating how we are going to do our temporary framing to support things while we remove these walls. We have an existing house in the West End. It's a detached structure. It has a uh, basement with a long bearing wall running down the middle. It has a few bearing walls on the main floor that we are proposing to you know, remove. So one going front to back. There was one running across the main floor. And then additionally upstairs, there is a rear wall to remove. And there are some partitions that pick up the roof. On the upstairs, it also needs support uh, during removal. So look at the main floor specifically. And we have a, a flush beam here to install, this B1 flush beam. We have to support this wall uh, while we make that removal and that beam installation. So knowing my joist direction, I'm building a temporary wall perpendicular to the joist that I'm supporting. And really that's what all I need to do. Now, this doesn't give me a whole lot of information to frame from. So the one thing I do wanna do is indicate uh, the spacing. So how far back I can be. So I can draw some simple little dimension lines here. So from, from my center line, and I can say that this is uh, 400. And this is 400, so millimeters. Because if I look upstairs, I'm picking up a second floor and a roof. So I'm permitted to be back as far as 400 millimeters. Now the beam to the right, this B2 flush, if I look directly above that, it's only picking up a roof. So I am permitted to be a little bit further back than that. I'm gonna draw a line, let me just change my pen. I'm gonna draw a line a little bit further back, maybe give myself a little bit more room for getting my beams in, maybe my some of my lifting equipment. And you know, I can I can annotate the dimensions here. And for this, because I'm only picking up a roof structure, I'm permitted to be back um, 600 millimeters. Now, the other thing I haven't communicated yet is what I'm framing this wall out of. And I could load up this drawing with a lot of references, um, but that might be quite uh, busy on the plan. So the easier thing to do is I can label these two walls. The temporary wall replacing B1, I can call this uh, temporary wall one. The wall is replacing uh, this, this uh, bearing wall with this beam that I'm showing at the rear. I can call that TW2. And I can continue to do that around my, my structure as I move upstairs, move downstairs, etc. Now, finding any kind of blank page or blank area in the page, I can then do a little key diagram. So TW1 and TW2 and essentially describe what that wall assembly is. So I can see that TW1 is a two by four framed wall. That is a uh, 16 inches on center. And I can say that it's 400 millimeters spacing. And I might want to just communicate that it uh, has a double top plate because it is acting as a, a structural wall while we put that beam in. And it does allow for a bit more low transfer through that top plate uh, to, to my temporary framing stud. So I can say double top plate. Okay, and I can do the same thing for TW2, and I'd indicate that it is also a 2 by 4 framed wall, 16 inches on center. It would be 600 millimeters maximum spacing and with a double top plate. And as I move through the rest of my drawing, I can indicate the rest of my, my scheme and my plan by you know limiting what I'm drawing in the plan to just be where I want my temporary framing support to be. So whether it's running across as this instance, if it's the front of the property, maybe I'm running a temporary wall here, and one here, and then I'm sort of staggering them to pick up that load as that wall kind of runs through that main floor. And, you know, I can load up the plan with lots of notes and drawings, or I can use a simple wall schedule and just make some annotations. TW1, TW2, upstairs, maybe labeled as TW3, TW4, whatever kind of allows you to communicate very simply 
and then all of your dimensions are, are one spot. So hope that helps um, in how you create your own strategies. So really be clear, use the plan to be simple, add minimum dimensions where they're required, and then try to use a kind of key diagram to explain the rest of your detail. Okay, thanks.